Before we get into today's show, let me tell you about HubSpot. If you're hustling in the trenches to build a business or bootstrapping one of your own, let's talk about an AI-powered tool that can lighten up your workload a bit. HubSpot's campaign assistant is a game changer for creating marketing campaigns at scale. It quickly turns your key selling points into a cohesive pitch, which helps you deliver knockout emails, ads, and landing pages in minutes. So let Campaign Assistant take care of the campaigns so you can get back to growing your business. Work smarter, not harder at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, April 13. I'm Juliet bennett Ryla here with Lestrando Alfred, and you're listening to The Hustle Daily Show. Today, we're going to talk about weather apps. They're great when they work, but they often mislead us. We're going to discuss why these supposedly useful apps often get it wrong. But first, let's talk about what else is happening in the world of business and tech. Inflation remains up in the United States, but it's rising slower. Last month saw a 0.1% increase, an improvement on February's 0.4% rate. March also marked the lowest monthly rise since May of 2021. NPR was pretty upset when Twitter slapped its profile with a state-affiliated media label followed by a government-funded media label. NPR is neither, with less than 1% of its budget coming from federal funding. As Twitter seems unwilling to budge, NPR announced it is taking its news and going home. BBC, on the other hand, will shed its government-funded media label and receive a publicly-funded label instead. Warner Brothers Discovery confirmed HBO Max and Discovery will merge into one service, Max, on May 23. Prices start at $9.99 if you're cool with ads. The Library of Congress's National Recording Registry has 25 new inductees from a variety of genre. They include Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You, the Super Mario Brothers theme song, and Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven. New York City has finally appointed its rat czar. Kathleen Karate, who formerly fought against rats for the Department of Education, will earn a salary of $155,000 a year to keep the city's rodent population under control. She has said in no uncertain terms that she hates rats, as do, she asserts, all New Yorkers. And finally, a way to earn some cash. If you find a security vulnerability in OpenAI's API, including ChatGPT, you could score up to $20,000. Purposely jailbreaking ChatGPT, however, will earn you nothing. And now let's talk about the weather. Les, do you use a weather app? I do. I tend to reference the Apple weather app a little more often than I'd like to admit. (laughs) You and I live in Los Angeles, albeit on opposite sides. And I find our weather is is pretty consistent, but not as consistent as people think it is. Oh, for sure. I mean, LA has so many microclimates that if you look up Los Angeles on the weather app, it might be consistent with one part of Los Angeles, but completely different for another neighborhood. Les is on the west side and I'm on the east side and we basically live in different states. Um, (laughs) It's different climates for sure. (laughs) But anyhow, complaining about the inaccuracy of weather apps, that's nothing new. It's a topic that was recently covered in The Atlantic and looked at by Sarah Friedman in today's newsletter. Now, there are over 100,000 apps out there, and they all pull from similar data. Uh, One example would be the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. That data is interpreted by meteorologists or app-specific algorithms or both, and then it's delivered to users. However, even the best weather apps achieve an accuracy of only 80% uh, or so, according to Forecast Advisor, which is a site that grades these apps. So one problem is apparently that weather is complex and even small changes in the atmosphere's moisture can have huge effects. Um, Less, as you said, anywhere with a microclimate such as a waterfront, mountain ranges, et cetera, are often given one sweeping forecast that may not be accurate for some users. And also human meteorologists can provide context and nuance in ways that apps can't. And then uh, some apps just give us a bunch of data, but we are not meteorologists. And so we really don't know how to read it. (laughs) The one thing that I found really interesting in this Atlantic piece, they were talking about how people still seem to like or have a loyalty to certain apps, especially ones that seem to come with a a vibe, um, (laughs) like if it looks pretty. And one of one that they mentioned was Carrot. So I was like, all right, I'm going to download it. And um, it's like a little weather bot, but she's very cheeky. Um, For example, she's like, I'll accept luxury vacations in exchange for better weather is what she said today. And 
Les, as you work in marketing, I'm wondering how you feel about this. Do people like the apps because they're cool or, or what do you think? I mean, I think that there's a few different reasons for this. I mean, people would absolutely use an app if it has a certain aesthetic that they like. I mean, I think we know, especially millennials and Gen Zs, love an aesthetic. And I also think that there's a big convenience element. If you're on the go, you're trying to determine the weather, you already have your phone in your hand, it makes sense to just hop onto your favorite app to check and see, even if it may not be the most accurate. Have you ever downloaded an an app that is not built in on your phone? I haven't, but you know what I have done a lot is I will ask Alexa what the weather is like while I'm in my closet trying to figure out what to wear, which kind of feels like the same thing. (laughs) Yeah, I do that with Google Assistant. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, this isn't necessarily about accuracy, but I will get frustrated with weather apps if it tells me something that I don't want to hear, much like it's told me in Los Angeles all year. I will get frustrated with an app if the weather is less than desirable. (laughs) Mm. which is not the app's fault, more of a me problem because I've been not so happy with how much gray and and rain we've had in Los Angeles this year. This reminds me of another type of app. (laughs) Do you also get upset if you look at a map program and it tells you there's a lot of traffic? Absolutely. It's the messenger, you know? (laughs) Yes. And do you think it would help if your mapping app was cute or had a cool vibe? (laughs) It could. You know, it could be cool if it was cute, had a cool vibe and could maybe curate a playlist for the adventure ahead that kind of matches your route. That could be kind of fun. That would be fun. I don't think I'm aw- I'm aware of like mapping software that's a, that you can get different voices. I saw, was it Waze? One of, one of them had a Zodiac thing where you could tell it your birthday and it would do things based on what it thought your star sign would agree with. <laughs> I need to find that. That sounds fun. You know, I would also be interested to see, thinking of it from a marketing angle, if there's any difference in how weather apps are used generationally. Like I would be willing to bet that probably folks that are a little bit younger would be more likely to download a very specific, maybe aesthetic, vibey weather app versus folks that are potentially a little bit older would be more likely to use the kind of basic Apple weather. I am pretty certain that my mom still turns on the television every day to see, you know, maybe not school closings now that her kids are grown, but I mean, every single morning, what's the weather going to be? My mom lives in Michigan where it snows a lot. Um, And I don't think she, (laughs) I don't think she's ever downloaded an app in her life. And I would say that's probably true of a lot of people her age, boomer generation. Whereas I definitely feel like, I don't know if you saw this the other day, but there is a YouTube channel called Lo-Fi Girl. Yes. And it is just a cartoon with some chill beats. It's raining outside her window. She has a little cat. And the other day she disappeared Mm -hmm. and the video zoomed into another window and revealed a new character in this universe, Lo-Fi or no, Synthwave boy, I guess Mm -hmm. we're calling him. Mm -hmm. And he studies with his little dog and listens to Synthwave. And that to me is the vibe I want from a weather app. For sure. Like cozy comfort. So I guess what we've learned today is if you're going to have an app that is wrong a lot, you should have a good vibe and be convenient. At least make it look good. All right, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you for tuning in to the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Ezra Trupiano, and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you are not subscribed, go over to thehustle.com slash email and get signed up. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, guys. If you listen to the Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.